We've done this before and we're doing it again. Thank you so much, Israel. UFC 276 was a blast. You and a plus one can be in the arena to watch me fight Drakus at UFC 293 in Sydney, Australia, or wherever it is. I will flew you out from anywhere in the world, put you up in a nice hotel, and you can celebrate with me at the after party. All you have to do is comment why it should be you. We're gonna randomly select a batch of comments and I will pick the winner. David Adesonya here, your uncrowned 145 pound champion, here with your two-time middleweight champion, Israel, the last bender, Adesonya. Let's quickly recap over the last week. All right, Robbie Lawler, what did you think of his retirement from the matchmaking up until the walk-off KO at the end? Perfect. That's how you want to do it. It was a moment for me, it was like when he stepped onto the, the steps, like I was there, right there behind him. And I saw him just like, he, he, he turned around and kind of just looked at the arena. And I was like, he just had this moment to himself where it's just like, fuck, it's the last time. And for me, I felt that. I felt that. I was just like, man, we can only do this for so long. And the way he won, it was just perfect. And the, it was cool, the clip they played for him afterwards as well. I like that. Yeah, so that's the way they should be doing yeah, it, going perfect. forward for like the legends. I, I agree, yeah. Yeah, double that. What did you think of Bo Nickel's performance? Bo Nickel, uh, expected. Literally what I expected. Um, I thought he'd submit him, but he, he knocked him out. And Kuros, the guy for stepping up like that, like, it's not easy, but he, you know, you gotta, you gotta risk it for the biscuit. How high was your heart rate during Dan and Jalen's war? Um, round two is where I lost my voice. Round two is where I lost my voice. And I remember grabbing Tim Tan and just putting it on my chest. And he's just like, I'm like, yeah, I know. Because I mean, I'm going to try and experiment. Next time I watch any of them fight, I'm just going to wear a heart rate monitor and just to see. I, I'm, I'm curious, just for science, to know how, how, like, how, how high it went. Like, During 287, mine was 143. 143. Yeah, when you yeah. knocked out um, Alex. But even before that, just like yeah. standing there, it was like 140. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she, she gets crazy. Oh, your phone's telling you. Yeah, you yeah, your watch. watch. Yeah, yeah. I was like, dang. I should get one of those. But yeah. yeah, fucking the resident psychopath at CKB. Broken, bone in the arm, broken, what he orbital, say? just a scratch. He's like, no, not even that. He said like, fuck, your wrist is already broken. Like, do you want to have a broken wrist and be a loser? Fuck it. Oh, I lost my shit, man. That's why I lost my voice. But I'm, I'm glad on the mic I didn't, I didn't like, um, you know, cr crack. It still came from within, yeah. All right, Whitaker versus Drykers. A common theme when people fight Rob is they talk about how well he's able to adjust and then, you know, things go from moves to counter moves and it turns into a chess match. Like, you know, you heard that from you, you heard that from, from Darren Till and so on. How would you grade, or what did you think of Rob's performance that Saturday night? I thought he was doing well. I thought he was, uh, if I recall, I think he was winning the first round until he, he got taken down, I can't remember. Not taken down towards the end of the first. End of the first, yeah. I thought he was winning yeah. the exchanges. And it was beat. very slow getting back up. Like, mm. you don't see that from... Who knows? But, um, yeah, it was a good fight. Did any aspects of Dragas's game surprise you? Or did he look like, you know, the same fighter that had fought Darren Till, Derek Branson? Were you surprised no, by anything? No, nothing surprised me. He's a, he's a crafty, crafty little minx, that one. But, um, yeah. Nothing surprised me. You got your wish. You're one of the only few pushing for dress. If, any, if to win. any, not many. Like, literally, this is what I'm saying. Shout out to Drickers for working hard to get that win, doing his thing. But not many was picking him to win. Yeah. And I was picking him to win for a reason. During the breakdown that we filmed, you and Dan, you were telling Dan that you visualized the whole thing, you know, Drickers winning, going to the octagon, having to face off. And you even said that you felt yourself, you know, losing it when you were in there, you know. I was turning. I, I was like, I felt turning, I myself. Yeah. No, because this is, and we were like, oh, you think you made this? Out? Like, I don't know. He worked hard. I manifest for myself, and I make sure I do the work to get that manifestation right. Um, it's not just sit there and like, kumbaya, oh, this is going to happen. No, I do the work, and I, I, oh, trust me. There's levels, and there's, I just, I don't even know how to like, uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's uh, is it frustrating? No, it's not really frustrating. I just feel sorry for people, to be honest. <laughs> I just do. I'm just like, well, you're not even tapping into these things and it's just available to us constantly. 
So, yeah, when it happened, I was just like, fuck yes. It was, I think it was me. And Eugene said he was also like, as, like one of the only ones as well backstage, just hands up, just like, yes. And I just I was urging him on, come on, forward, forward. Even at the prep point, I was like, I was giving him energy, like, fuck yeah, positive affirmations, like, let's go. But, um, yeah, when it happened, I just lost my shit. And then when I was saying, and when I visualized things and I see it happening, as I was, as I was telling you guys, I was like, I could feel myself turning. Cause I said, like, yeah, let's go niggas. I was saying, I was like, yeah. My question was, what, where does that energy come from? Within, it comes from within. It's just, you know, you know, it's funny. Tell me. No matter what I do, after my last fight, I grabbed the mic say it's the best post fight speech in history of the company ever um you know i grab the mic after his fight people feel away and they're like oh it's cringe it's you know bad look this and that right 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 but either way i make you feel something either way when i grab the mic and i really speak from the heart or speak from my gut i really make you feel something whether you love me or hate me you will feel something i find that really interesting I'm not trying. I wasn't. I just make shit happen because that's how I feel and I want to make it happen. I want to make him feel me. I want to make him feel me. He doesn't understand when I went, like, even I, I didn't understand, but I understand, like, because I was just like, feel me, come here, feel me. And I was saying it, like I said, I turned. People said I turned heel. I was like, it's not heel. I just, I can feel myself switch. The beast comes out. And I was saying, feel me. I didn't, I was like, I didn't understand what I, what, I, what I meant, but now I understand when I say feel me. I want to make him feel me. He'll feel your energy. He'll feel me. No, he'll feel me more than my energy. He'll feel me for real. Like Costa felt you. Ah! <laughs> that was good. Uh. <laughs> and the pound for pound king is back on top of the rankings. Uh, he never let left. me hear. I don't know what people are talking about. People, I, I said it's like he never left. Like that whole list is bullshit. I think Alex is the best fighter that I've ever seen. That puts it together so well. But he never left in my eyes, so I, like you know me, I don't pay attention to the list. So when people were like, "Oh, he's this, he's that," I was like, "Doesn't matter, he's the best." But it's subjective, it's art, and art is subjective. So I see him as the best. He's just the best to ever do it. Talk to me about your thoughts on his performance against Yair. Dan, he got my heart rate up. But once I saw the the distance control with Yair, I was like, "Oh, he's good." I wasn't panicking. I was just like, he's, "I was calm." But Dan, there was moments in there I just fucking lost my mind. I'm glad he got the win. So happy for him. But um, yeah, Alex, as soon as I just... And when you know, you know, you, you train with someone so much. We've seen them, watched them, being a fan of them for so long. You're just like, oh yeah, he's on. He was on. And it was just beautiful to watch and listen to. Yeah. Talk about the era of the Three Kings. You, Kamaru, and Francis. Talk to me of how that moment was in the UFC when, you know, all three of you were champion, what it meant to you and so on. Just talk about, you know, that Three Kings era. You know, I remember there was um, some reporter asked me when Usman was about to fight Tyron and said, like, is there a part of you that wishes Usman would lose just so you could be the first? And I was like, what kind of crabs in a bucket mentality is that? Like, why would I wish my brother loses just so I could be the first? Could never be me. But again, that's because he's my brother. I'll never take that away from him. That That's his moment, you know? Same with Francis as well. As soon as I heard the news recently, first person I text was him, I was like, I'm gonna be there witness history. Cause, <laughs> you know, a lot of people were, were counting him out and I said, just let him cook. I said, let him cook. And cook he did. How happy are you for Francis? Very happy. So that like, he fumbled the bag. That's I what mean, I mean. All the all the all the all the narratives and the oh, one FC don't want to you know, anything with him anymore. Look, I said it already. I said he'll be back in the UFC. I think he'll be back in the UFC, but he just has to make his bag elsewhere first. But this is how I see things. I see things differently. Um, and Dana and him have their beef, but I just I feel like he'll do what he has to do. Then he'll be back in the UFC and get the respect he deserves and get the money he deserves. But this right here is, is a big win for him. It's a big win for us as fighters. Um, yeah, again, that's my brother. That's big bro. Uh, so I, I text him through. I was like, well, we're going to Saudi Arabia. I'm witnessing that shit live because, man. Like at the same time as well, you have two fighters from Nigeria and one from Cameroon at the same time. 
when there was only a handful of African fighters in the hundreds and hundreds of fighters in the UFC and three of them are champions at the same time. That's unheard of. That's crazy. I, I feel like it, it will be done again in the future and be more than three because African MMA is only just rising now. It's only just rising now. You have guys like myself, Francis, Kamaru, uh, Themba, and Drikas, you know, like what we're doing right now is just gonna rise Africa MMA. So there will be more champions, multiple champions at the same time. Yeah. Let's rewind to before UFC 290 to when uh, you guys broke the internet. I'm talking about you running into John Jones at uh, the Red Rock Casino floor. Some people were saying it was fake. I don't know, some people were asking me if it was fake, really? if it was like set up or like, you know, really? if you guys were communicating to like really? meet somewhere or whatnot. Nah. So just, uh, so just, really? just- People actually think that. Yeah, I don't know, fucking people just stuff a club. Yeah, yeah, never mind. I, yeah. All right, break, out, break it down to us. How did this whole chance encounter happen? Like I said, it's no one's business. Like when I posted about it, I was like, it's between me and him, that's it. But it definitely wasn't a fake encounter. It just, I think it was divine intervention. I honestly do, because I feel like there were so many timelines that could have ended up just differently. Came back from the gym, I was tired. I was gonna stay in my room and eat Uber Eats. And I was like, nah, let me go downstairs a little bit, have a look at the casino. Uh, let me go to the restaurant where AB and them were. Went down there, decided to eat my Uber Eats, eat my Uber Eats in the, in the VIP lobby. And then I was like, let's go to the casino floor. And as I was there, I could have, yeah, I could have been in my room. I could have gone to excess with the boys because they were tempting me. And I was like, no, I'm tired. I got to sleep after training. And I had an early start. But um, didn't go to excess, didn't stay in my room. I decided to, instead of going to the casino straight away, I was like, oh, let me just go to the bar. And then as I get to the bar, I'm just standing. I never, whenever I go anywhere, I never make eye contact with anyone. Because if you make eye contact with someone, that's like the invitation. They're like, oh, he wants to talk. I'm like, fuck off. So I just walk and I can see there's a black guy, there's a white guy, there's two chicks, there's a guy and a girl on the other side, and there's two bartenders. And I get to the bar and I just like sit there or stand there and I'll just on my phone. And then I hear, no way. And I could, you just think it's like, oh, some fan or whatever. And then he turns around and I was like, oh shit, what the fuck? And instantly we just dapped up. It was like the energy was just, if you were around, you witness history was palpable. It was just like, yeah, it was like a, it was a nigga moment in the most, in the best way possible. You know, like, put it up, <laughs> nigga. put it up, put it up. Actual, put it up. <laughs> it was, no, I, was, I was like, it was like oh, sh oh shit, what the fuck? Like, I was like, I, and then we just sat down and just chopped it up. It was cool. And yeah, we chopped it up about everything. And that's need to know basis. We got to get a little sneak peek. <laughs> nah. It was cool. It was fucking just like vibes. It was, it was good vibes. All right, some follow-up questions. Is the beef squashed? Yeah. Is, we, we, have, we have understanding, common ground. And we're competitors, that's it. We're competitors, but there's no like, why should I hate my brother? If that makes sense. Did you, were you like looking at the comments and like, uh, you know, the only, MMA actually, you know one thing, reaction one talk? thing I really liked was only the YouTube comments. I didn't really see everything else. I, I just I went deep in the YouTube comments and I legit, every comment was just like, it made me smile watching this, smile, everyone, literally, just after the next, you, oh, I was smiling so hard watching this. And for me, I felt like, I said divine intervention, cause like giving people that feeling, cause they're watching a spar and play around and just like, oh, it's like, it warms my heart to see this and this and that, right, 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 people were just saying. It felt, it felt like, is this world, is this what world peace would feel like? I don't know. Peace in our time. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know. But like, imagine world peace when there's no one at war, people aren't fighting. It felt like a little bit, like a little bit of world peace. Maybe that's what it would feel like. I don't know. That's just my way of feeling it. I was just like, oh, okay. And then now I have war. <laughs> <laughs> we back. <laughs> we back. Nah, not, on, not, not the... even just on YouTube, on everything that I got posted on. All the comments were wholesome. It was like, you could really feel the... Yeah, the, the one the chat respect. Energy. Yeah. Yeah, so beef squashed. Next question, will you two train together? Yeah, definitely. I already, it's, it's in the works.
it'll happen. After international fight week, you and Volk flew over to hang out and train with Mr. Mark Zuckerberg. Before we talk about that, what did you? What was your first reaction when you first heard about this whole Elon fight thing? What was my first reaction? I thought, cool. Yeah, so thought it was cool. You posted up a photo with the caption, no fugazi with Mark. This is serious business. Were you impressed with what you saw training with him? Yeah, for the amount of time he's been training, the amount of time he trained, and also like, I put it on him. I wanted him to feel the pressure of what it would be like to have a bigger man going after him. So I wasn't like nice to him. I was coaching him. It was kind of like a crash course in, in fighting. So I was coaching him as we were going along and he was a smart man. I'll tell you, he's a smart man. Mm -hmm. And he, I was impressed with afterwards. He'd like, cause I think I'd be done with him. He'd be like, Israel, can we go another round? I'm like, mm. sure. And then we'd just sit down afterwards and he's like, Israel, can we go another round? I'm like, oh shit. I, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't being easy on him. So I was like, he wants to go again. And yeah, I think he respected grit. that. Yeah, like he'd fire back. His first strike he threw was a leg kick. It was solid. I was like, okay. And I let him, you know, you need that, that, that risk. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So you, you need to feel that give back as well. So I, I let him kick me. I let him punch me, hit the guard, hit the face sometimes. It's basic stuff. Like I'm teaching him the basics. Yeah. So, but yeah, he's, 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 he's a gamer. I like that. He's, he's tenacious. He's like a Jack Russell, like a feisty Jack Russell. Yeah. Y'all both have South Africans to deal with. Could you guys fight on the same card? Maybe. Maybe. I think if they fight, they should fight. It'll be the biggest fight, like most viewed fight in history. Yeah. Like the whole world will actually stop to watch that fight. That'll be crazy. We'll just wrap up talking about UFC Sydney. There are six of you on this card. So far. So far. Y'all had your first, I don't know, I came to Spider today. There was like three groups of Spider. <laughs> I mean, I mean... Week one, talk to me about um, how the first spider went and what are the vibes like in the garrison, the Bruh, CKB, getting ready? Like, my first spider was dope. I felt like I killed that. Obviously, there's, there's improvements to be made. I'll, I'll do better. But, like, for the first spider, I didn't get yelled at much by Eugene. So that was <laughs> great success. Yeah. Are you excited for the atmosphere that's going to be building in the yeah. gym? I'm looking forward to the work, and I've even like I this is the most you guys have had in the card. Yeah, I, I posted a, a picture with the the guys I know I'm gonna be working with, and guys I like draw bits of inspiration from. And I'm just like, yeah, this is this is the village hidden in the streets of Mount Eden. We came back on Thursday, landed at 6 a.m. after a 12-hour flight. Uh, you went straight to the gym for the 9 a.m. class. Did strength and conditioning in the afternoon. Uh, right after, actually. Right, right after. I thought you know you might have taken you know, a day off or something. Nah. How different. motivated are you for this next fight? I, I said, I think all of Vegas, even in the after party, everywhere. I kept on saying, I was like, "Fuck kill, let's go." And anyone that just looks at me, I've never been more motivated to kill a man. When I say that, I mean that like, not to end his life, but to really put a beating on someone, not emotional anger, just really want to take time and really put a beating on someone. And I'm going to work my way to get that done in all ways, all shapes, all angles, all aspects of the fight. Hey guys, what's up? Izzy here. Like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed this video.